Okay guys, so in this video, I will just do an overview of my code that I wrote of generic finite state machine. So this video will be quite long, but I hope I will like explain to you guys what is finite state machines and how you can write your own one. And if there will be like high request, I will write it from scratch and go through each line of the code. So today I will just do a brief overview of it. So most of you, I assume, know what finite state machine is. So that's why you uh, clicked on this video. And for those who don't know, it's basically a way to write AI. So each AI has some finite number of states that it can be in. So basically a state can be chasing or idling or attacking. Those are the states. So here I have a very basic setup. So I have my AI, which is uh, this blue cube and our player, which is the sphere. So if I click on the AI, you can see it has a script called NPC state machine. So this script is responsible for all the behavior and the logic of our AI. So here I have the variable that is called current state and it's basically a enum of states that our AI can be in. So here I have three states. I, I didn't want to complicate it, complicate it. So I made three. So we have idle, we have chase and we have grow. And I have a public field which is called target and basically it's a, our player, it's our target. So normally I, I wouldn't expose that. I would like get it through the code, but uh, for the sake of the video, I made it public. So now let's see the behavior. So basically our cube will rotate in the idle state. And when I approach it near enough, it will start chasing me. So as you can see, I approach it very near. So it starts chasing me and also looking at me. And if it chased near enough, it will start growing. So as you can see, it starts growing and it will stop if I move out of the zone. So I will move it up, move out and it will go back to idling. So the behavior is very easy, but the, the code behind it is actually quite, quite uh, complicated. So let's go through the code. But before that, let's do a quick overview of all the scripts that we will cover. First is state machine and state machine basically contains all the states that our AI can be in. So for example, chase, grow or idle. State basically contains two arrays, one for actions and one for transitions. And the action can be for example to nothing and transition can be for example to chase. Action has one method which is called and inside this method we just write the behavior for this action. So in this case it's a translate behavior. Transition contains the decision class, which will basically decide whether we should go to success state or fail state. Lastly, we have the class decision, which has one method, which returns bool. And in this case, it will decide whether we are in range or not. Okay guys, so now let's dive in into scripts. So I'll pick the easiest one, which is base action. So let's double click on it. So as you can see, uh, it's quite small class and don't worry about this thing. Basically, this is just the interface which has two methods called onStateEnter and onStateExit, which I can call when I enter a state. But don't worry about it and don't worry about this param parameter T. Uh, it stands for generic, but we don't worry about that for now. Uh, one thing we have to know is this class is abstract and the reason why it, it's abstract because we want to derive from this base action class. So we have to make specific actions, for example, for the idling state, there was, there, there was a rotate action, which just made our cube rotate. So here next we have the owner of this state machine. So it's T because it's generic. So for example, if you have your NPC, the T will be NPC. You can have other NPCs. For example, you can have 
I don't know, you have you can have the tank and the tank can have other parameters than the than the wolf, which is an animal, but it can also be an NPC. So T is just stands for generic type, so you can have everything here. So here we have just store the owner of our state machine so we can access its data. So for example the speed or the health of of the NPC. So this is just the method that we will call from our state that has this action. It will set our owner. Next we have the abstract method called do action and this method is the most important method inside this class because this is responsible for the behavior of our action. So it's abstract because we want our derived class to override it and implement its own behavior. So for the rotate action, I will show you guys here. So I will search for it. It's called NPC action rotate. So as you can see, it's override its action. And inside this method, we are just basically rotating our cube. So we use the owner, the field owner, and we access this transform and then we rotate it. So it's very simple and each of the action they have to override it and they implement their own behavior so that's why it's so modular next we have those two methods i talked about so they will be called once you enter the state and once you exit the state so inside those two methods you can set up your variables you can reset your data or in initialize something if you want so they are virtual because I don't want our derived class to have to override it. So they don't have to override it. It will be empty by default. So that's why here you could see that we are not overriding it because we don't need anything to do when we enter in the state and exiting the state. So that's the one thing. And I think that it's everything for the actions. Okay guys, so now let's talk about the other array, which is the transition array. So now let's open it. So as you can see, again, we have the T parameter and the T is uh, again, just to assign the owner, Not, nothing complicated. I can explain it in further detail if you want me to do, but it will require more time. So it's just a class. It's not abstract or anything, it's just a class. And the reason why it's just a class because all the transitions, they are all the same. The logic for them is all the same. So basically you have two states. So here we have a success state and we have a fail state. And they will be called, they will be transitioned into based on some decision. So we also have the variable for the decision and this will just return true or false. So if it's returned true, our state will go to the success state. If it's false, it will go to fail state. So it's very simple and all these transitions, they have the same logic. So basically based on some decision, either go to true or false. So that's why it's a class. We don't want to derive from it because they are all the same. You can actually derive from it if you want to have some custom logic inside the update uh, method that is called during the do transition, but I don't recommend that and I don't see the case where you should actually do that. So let's go back to the first line. So we have this name of the transition and this is purely used for me or the person that is writing the the behavior so you can name it from idling to chase or from chase to grow and it's just a description of your transition next those two states i talk about you already know they return int because we are using the enum and the enum is basically an integer so it's the most simple way to change the states to store the states as the integers next the base decision let's dive into base decision script so inside the base decision script 
you can see it's very si similar to the base action script so again you just set the owner of this state machine then we have the abstract method which returns bool as i said before so it will it will return either true or false and again we have two method on state enter and on state exit if we want to do some initial initial initialization on this state so let's look at the example of the derived class and i have the derived class called npc decision in range and as you can see i just override it the method decision and i also have the variable called range so this will return true or false based on the distance between our player and the owner of the state machine so for example if our player is within some range that we specified then it will return true else it will return false and based on that our transition will go either to success state or fail state so it's very simple to wrap your head around the the concept of it but the code may be uh, might be a bit more harder but you'll get the understanding of it once you look at it more so next we just have the basic co uh, constructor so it will be called when we create this class and we are just passing the variables that we want so the name the decision and the two state the success and the fail state and we just ha assign those variables to our private variables next we have a method called set owner and this will just basically set the owner for our base decision here after that line we have a method called do transition and this method is returning the end so it will return the state so inside this method you, as you can see it will just return either success state or fail state based on that decision and value that is returned will be used in our base state which i will talk about later on and at the end as you can see here again we have on state enter we can do some different stuff also here but i'm just calling the on state enter for my decision and on state ex exit for my decision okay guys so now let's talk about the base state class so as you can see it's an abstract class because we want to derive from it it also has the interface i state which just holds two methods on state enter and on on state exit that will be called and first method inside this class is called init state and this method is called inside our state machine so our state machine will be responsible for providing the data for this state so it will gi give it a reference to this state machine and inside this method we'll just set our action and also set our transitions so if you look at it those two methods they are abstract and the reason why they are abstract because we want to implement it inside our inherited class and each of the inherited state they all have different set of actions and they have different set of transitions that's why we couldn't do a virtual method here so if i go to the derived class called npc state idle you can see that all it does is just inheriting from the base state and it's overriding two methods it's overriding set transitions and set actions so inside set actions we are just assigning the new array to our variable m action which is stored inside our base state so if i go back to the base state you can see we have two arrays we have one array to store our actions and we have one array to store our transitions so let's go back to the npc state idle you can see we are just assigning a new array and inside this array we are just passing which action we want to have in in this state so we want to have two actions we have one action for idling which does nothing and we have one action for rotating our owner so that's everything for the set actions and we do the same with the transitions we are we are just assigning the new array of transition 
and we specify what transition we want here. So you can see we want a new transition and we call it to chase. So it will check if we should go to the chase state or not. And we pass in as the decision, the new class called NPC decision in range. So it will check if our player is inside range of three. And if it is, it will go to NPC chase state here and if it returns false it will go to the idle state which is the current state so that's the npc state idle so let's go back to our base state so next we have a method which is set owner it's just basically set the owner for this base state and for all the actions and transitions inside this base state now if we go down a bit you can see we have onStateEnter method and inside this onStateEnter we are just calling uh, onStateEnter for each of our actions and for each of our transitions. You can also have the custom behavior here if you want uh, and that's why it's virtual so your inherited class can override it and have the custom behavior there. So inside the update class it's most important piece uh, of this class. So as you can see in, in the first line of the method, I'm just declaring a new variable, which is an integer called state, and I assign it to be minus one. And the reason why it's minus one, because the minus one means that there's no state that can have a minus one index. So the enum, they start from zero as almost everything in programming. And if you set something to minus one, it basically means that it's unset so it's basically a different version of null so you can't uh, set our basic integer to null so that's why i'm setting it to minus one which almost equals to null so, so i'm just setting it to null basically so next inside this method we are just calling do action method for each of our actions that we start in our array and we do the same with the transition we just call the do transition method for each of our transition so uh, at the bottom we have two most important lines for the base state so as you can see we have the check condition here and basically this check condition is checking whether we should go to another state so it, it's checking if the state that our transition returned is different from our current state that we are already in so for example we are in the idling and our state machine behavior is doing some checking if we should go to other scripts so this transition just returns either true or false as we talked about earlier so if it returns false it means that it the state will be idle because we didn't succeed in our transition so we remain in our state so this will not be called we will not set the new state if our do transition returns the same state but if it returns true so if it returns a state this will evaluate to be true which means that we have a new state because it's not equal to our current state index and then we are just calling the set new state method on our state machine and we are passing this new state so i will talk about it uh, in a few moments but let's finish our class so at the end we have on state exit and it's just the same matter as on state enter so we are just calling on state exit for each of our action and for each of our transitions okay guys so now let's talk about the meat of our finite state machine system which is the state machine so let's open it and as you can see it's the same matter we have an abstract class and we want to derive from it so i'll just show you guys the derived class so i have this script called npc state machine and this script is actually on our cube so it's our ai and it's just basically implementing the state machine class but i'll talk about it later let's go back to our state machine so inside this class we have the action called on state change and this action will be called when you change your state 
so you can for example debug it on the console or you can do whatever you want with it when in the next two lines here i just have the variable to store the index of our current state and as you saw before it is accessed uh, by the states of our state machine so each of our state it has to know what index is so it can check whether it should go to the next state or not uh, that's why i have the getter for it and the reason why it's a getter because i don't want anything else to change this index apart from the state machine so it's a private set and public get so if you scroll down you can see we also have the explicit uh, variable to start our base state so we have to have it because we want to update our current state and do other stuff with it next we have the dictionary and this dictionary is basically stores all of our states and that's why i name it all state and uh, for the key we use the integer as i said before it's the most simple and flexible way for me at least to to do it and as the value we just store our state so if we move down i will just skip the property part for now but i will talk about it in a few minutes you can see that we have the virtual void awake and inside this awake we just want to fill our state machine with the states so this method is abstract because we want our derived class to do it because each of state machine can have different sets of states that's why it's abstract and we want our derived class to fill out states so if i go to npc state machine and if i go down you can see i have the method override it and inside this method i'm just filling out my all all states dictionary with the states that i want so i have the idling i have the idling state i have the chase state and i have the grow state and each of the states they own have the index and the index is just the number in the enum that we created inside the state machine so this enum is called npc state and it has three options it can either be in idle chase or grow and here i'm just using it as the key for the dictionary so now let's go back to the state machine you can see that below that we have the initialize state machine method and you probably notice that uh, this method is called here and the reason why it is called here because this method has to happen after we fill out our state machine states so this method is dependent on this method because it needs our dictionary to be filled so this will return null if we call it before fill state machine states so we have to make sure that this method is called after fill state machine and the way i did that is i made a property which is public get and i have the custom behavior inside this set block so here i'm just setting the value incoming to our all state but after that i'm calling initialize state machine so doing it that way i can be sure that this method is called after we fill out our all states because we fill it out just before right here so inside this method we are just doing initializing initialization stuff so i'm just initializing our current state index and i'm just initializing our current state so you can see that we have the argument here and set to null by default and the reason why it's set to null by default because i don't want to pass begin state each time i create a new state machine so that's why it's set it to null and when it's set it to null it will just pick first from the dictionary so here you can see i'm just checking if it's null if it's null i will just pick the index zero which is the first one and this is the same for the current state variable 
you can see that we have the weird operator here and i forgot the name of it but it's called null or something and what it does is basically checking if this value is null if it is it will use the value on the right hand side of this of this expression if this value is not null it will use the left hand side value instead so below that i'm just looping through my dictionary and i call init state for each of our state inside this dictionary and last i'm just calling on state enter method of this of our current state that we just set so moving on we have the update method and inside this update method we are just calling on state update on our current state and we are passing the time the delta time so you can do um interpolating or or something inside the states so last thing last method is called set new state as you can see this method is called inside our base state so if i go here uh, if you remembered this method is called here when we when we transition into the new state this method will be called and we are just passing the new state index so you can see it takes a new state index and we just uh, we are just setting our current state variable uh, we are just setting our current state index variable to our new state index and we are just calling appropriate things so we first want to call on state exit of our current state that we are in then we want to assign a new state to our car current state variable and we do uh, do that by just passing the key to our dictionary so it will get the correct value based on that index and after we set it to the new state we just want to call on state enter of that fresh new state and at the when, um, at the end we just call the at the end we just call the action the delegate so you can subscribe to that action and as i said do whatever you want so that's that's everything for the state machine guys as you can see here inside on enable uh, in in the derive npc state machine class i'm just subscribing to on state change and on disable in on disable i'm just unsubscribing from it so this this method is basically setting my current state enum to be the new enum and that's everything i do inside this npc state machine so if you if I go back to the Unity, you can see that this current state here will update each time I go to the new state. So it's now in the idle. And if I go close enough, you can see that it uh, it changed itself to chase. And if I go close enough, it will change it to grow. And then back to idling. So that is how you can use the on state change delegate so i think that's everything guys i wanted to say as the basic of the state machines there are a lot of more stuff more to say and i don't know if i'm able to do it because i'm not that good at explaining stuff yet so i hope you understand something and i haven't touched the generic part of it because i think it will be too complicated i think it's already complicated but if you want me to do a full tutorial i'll just do it from the scratch and that's why it will be a lot easier to understand the code so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one bye